It's often pointed out that significant numbers of people in sub-Saharan Africa never meet a doctor or nurse in their entire lives. 57% of people in Uganda still don't ever see a health worker. They go to a traditional healer. They see people going to hospitals and coming home in a box because they go so late that they die. You know, without chemotherapy and radiotherapy, the tumours grow into massive proportions. Cancer can become very disfiguring. Uh, it can spread to all parts of the body and with no pain control other than simple paracetamol or something like that, the pain would be terrible. So especially in children, when you see that, it's, it's very upsetting. At any one time in Uganda, there's about a quarter of a million people uh, who have pain for one reason or another due to cancer or maybe pain, pain due to AIDS. Once a patient is pain, you can't talk to them. You can't, they can't, nor can the families talk to you. They're so distressed by what's going on with the pain. Anne Merriman is, is a force of nature, she cannot be stopped. And she has energy that I haven't seen in anyone else. There's a big resistance to the governments allowing in the morphine, and this is because our doctors have been taught that anybody who takes morphine is very likely to become an addict. The hospice now produces their own morphine under a government license and without that they couldn't do what they do. We import the powder, we make it up with water with a preservative and some dye for the different strengths and we, we um, dispense it into recycled water bottles and the cost of it now is the price of a loaf of bread. I went to the hospice about four or five years ago and very struck by how they had realised that the model that is working and working quite well uh, in America and Europe wouldn't work at all out there. If they tried to replicate it, it would fall flat on its face. Things are different. When I went there, my pharmacy was the kitchen and it was a very simple thing to compound the morphine powder. It was just a case of adding water, for, or water and preservative and things like that. And we would do that every couple of weeks. It becomes very apparent to you when you're there just how much support Ireland has actually given in a very, very practical way. It really was the Irish Embassy in Kampala with uh, Irish Aid that ensured that Anne had her, her first real premises that she could actually work from. And it would be great going forward if Ireland was the, the nation that would actually help pay, pay, you know, people and patients in poor countries and other kind of poor African countries benefit in the way that Uganda has. So the beauty about Hospice Africa in Uganda and Hospice Africa generally is that it's locally owned, locally managed uh, and locally run by medics coming through uh, the hospitals and, and the training schools uh, there. But the amount they achieve with such a small amount is, is really remarkable and they do simple things extremely well. So they cope with large numbers of patients with very little in terms of resources. There was a young boy, he was about I'd say eight, and he was looking after his grandmother who had uh, cervical cancer. 
and the other family members had actually uh, died and it was I suppose a very kind of poignant moment because he was listening to the school bell that other children were obviously attending school for and that he wasn't attending school for but he knew by the school bell during weekdays and then kind of as the sun was setting how to actually give her her pain control and she had actually a very effective uh, palliative of care within that setting. She has fantastic vision but she also has the know-how to make things happen and I think that's what people respect and I think that's essentially why she's so persuasive. <laughs> produced a template that works and they came up with an idea, they set up the programme and they've proven that it works over several years. And from the very start they've thought big in that they said right we'll start this in Uganda but very much with the intention of spreading this way of looking after people. It's really working in Uganda and it's working in every part of Uganda and it's so important now that this model of hospice care can spread throughout all of Africa. These are people who, who have vision and they don't just look at what is there and say, this is good, let's leave it at that. They're saying, this is good, let's make it better.